Well, welcome back to another Wayne Eyes Photos video. And integrated handlebars are becoming more the norm, especially on the premium bicycles. And they look really neat. The cables are all concealed within the actual handlebars and the actual go down through the stem and into the frame and you can't see them at all. And even some of the manufacturers are offering some adjustments like Canon, although there's been a no ride issue on those handlebars. But nevertheless, that sort of flexibility is starting to come in these integrated handlebars. Now, are they really all they're cracked out to be? Well, let's roll that intro and let's just have a bit of discussion about that. I'd just like to extend a thank you to all those people who've watched my videos and also the people that have subscribed and liked and shared my videos. And if you'd like to support the channel a little bit further, then I've got these jerseys available and they're really high quality. They've got really good colouring that doesn't fade. I've bought jerseys from this manufacturer before for my own personal use, so I know how good the quality is. So guys, if you want to support the channel, then just have a look in the description for pricing and sizing. Now integrated handlebars usually come in a number of different options. And the main two ones are partially integrated and fully integrated. So you can have ones where you can actually still change the handlebars, but the actual stem and the actual headset are a different design to allow for the integrated cables to be concealed instead of coming outside of the handlebars. And then you actually have the fully integrated ones where it's actually one piece all the way from the actual fork, fork stem all the way up to your controls where you actually brake and change gears on a bicycle. Now, the move is going more towards the fully integrated. So you're seeing all these top end bikes with the fully integrated one piece. Now, yes, they probably are a little bit lighter, but they do have some significant disadvantages which people need to consider before purchasing a bicycle. And they need to understand what their actual usage is, what their actual fit is on the bike, before they actually go and put down their hard earned money, which can be considerable with these new bikes. And then you find out later that you actually get a stem that actually doesn't fit you properly or isn't fit for purpose for your type of usage. Now the first issue with integrated handlebars is actually fit. Now, if you're a person and you've had a bike fit, you know exactly your measurements and you can actually go to your bike shop and you can say, hey, look, you know, I want this X bike and it's got an integrated handlebars and I need the actual stem and the actual width of the handlebars to be these dimensions. Can you actually supply that with the bike? And that's what I would recommend because the problem is with these integrated handlebars, if you just ask them to get a, so much, you know, say 54 centimeter, 56, whatever your size is framing, they will come with the standard handlebars that come with that bike. And they may not actually be the actual handlebars that you're actually after. Now, a lot of these bike shops don't actually stock all of these different proprietary handlebars for all these different brands and all of the different widths and different lengths because they're very expensive. And, you know, the shops then get stuck with stock that they can't move. So they basically just get the bike in, build it up, whatever the handlebars on it is on it. And if you say to yourself, oh, look, I want a different handlebars, they kind of um and are a little bit sometimes. That's what I found. Or the manufacturers won't change the handlebars out for you. So that is something to consider before you actually purchase the bike. Say either to the bike shop, will you allow me to actually change the handlebars before I actually purchase or order the bike? Well, the second thing you need to consider with an integrated handlebar is the actual usage of your bike. Now, you may actually have one bike that you use and it's your like, you know, going out with your group ride bike, so you want it to be really slick and look smooth and have everything concealed. So when your bike's parked up at the cafe, it looks really schmick, right? And then, you know, you might have the odd days where you like to go backpacking and you want to hang some stuff on it and you might want to flip the stem, you know, to get a little bit of a more relaxed ride. And this is something that you can't do with an integrated handlebar. So once you buy that handlebar, you have to realize that that's fixed. It, it cannot be changed at all. So if that's, if you have your bike, you only have one bike and you need it to be versatile, it might actually be better to go for a bike which has the normal separate stem, separate handlebars, so then you can flick the stem or you can actually change the stem out for a different type of stem. And the cables usually have a little bit of extra give in them so you can raise the handlebars or you may even want to actually change the handlebar so you can fit bags on the front or get a wider handlebar on there or a flared handlebar. 
So it makes it easy to be able to do that. Whilst the integrated handlebars, it's a lot more costly if you want to change it out and a lot more hassle because everything is actually concealed in. And it's a really big nightmare to take all that apart to put a different handlebar on. Now, a lot of people like to travel with their bikes, me included. And you like to go on holidays with your bicycle to different countries and you like to put it in a bike box. Now, what you need to consider with that is, is a lot of the airlines actually have limitations on box sizes. So I know if I fly with Qantas, they have a certain width and a certain length and height. So I've got to make sure that my bike can fit into a box. I can't just go and get a really big box and say, hey, I'm not going to take the handlebars, I'm not going to take the wheels off, I'm not going to do anything. They will reject that, that bicycle box. They'll say, no, you can't. You can't put that on our plane because it doesn't meet our bicycle box requirements. So that's actually something else you need to consider. And the handlebars may be able to be removed without too much effort, but that's something that you want to go through before you purchase the bike with the bike shop. Say, okay, then let's just say I'll travel with this bike and I'm buying this model with these handlebars on. How difficult is it to be able to remove those handlebars and lift them off and be able to tie them down and strap them to my frame so then my bike can fit into this size box, which is normally the airlines that I use when I travel, you know, and go overseas. So is integrated handlebars the future? And the answer to that is yes, because the manufacturers want to go this way and they want to have this very slick looking type of handlebar system where they have all the cables and everything integrated. And when you have a one piece handlebars, there's no joins or anything. So it just looks really smooth. You have a continuous shape that goes up all the way around to the actual handles and all the cables are concealed. And it does, it looks extremely neat. Now, I agree, I agree, that looks fantastic. But the problem is with all that is what I've just mentioned. Plus also to make a piece from the manufacturer where all of this is made in one, you have a lot of complex bends, a lot of concealed parts to change direction, and the quality control would be a lot harder to maintain with an item like that compared to just a normal set of handlebars and a normal stem. So that is also something else to consider as well. You know, these, these handlebars, these carbon handlebars, have actually a reputation of breaking, and we've actually seen that even this year with the, 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 the Canyon handlebars and where they've given way. Now, you might go, oh yeah, look, that doesn't happen very often, but if you actually talk quietly to on, the, on the side to your, to your bike shop, they might tell you that they've seen quite a few incidents of handlebars breaking that are carbon. So, you know, carbon handlebars, I personally wouldn't recommend it. I'd say for just everyday riding, you're better off with aluminium handlebars. And the actual weight difference is really small. Like generally it's around about 50 grams. It might vary depending if they're aero or not aero, but it's not a lot. And then you have that security of a handlebar that's actually not quite as fragile as a carbon handlebar. So in conclusion, should you buy integrated handlebars? Well, the answer to that is yes, yes. If you like the look of them and you like that concealed look and you're buying a bike with disc brakes and it has hydraulic hoses and it's got electric shifting, all of the cables can very easily go around tight corners and you can conceal all of these all of these hoses, all of the actual wires for all of the, the actual group set, or it could even be a SRAM ASX group set that actually has no wires, so then all you have to worry about is the hydraulic hoses. And it does look very, very slick, but what you need to consider when you go to the bike shop and you're looking at these type of bikes and you're wanting to buy one, you need to consider your usage and you really need to know your bike fit because once you get that, that length and that handlebar width, it's set. Now you might go, oh yeah, well look, I can change them out, but if you go and price up these integrated handlebars, they're considerably more than just buying a normal set of handlebars. You normally can buy two or three handlebars for the price of one of these integrated handlebars. So, you know, you can try different sizes, you can try different drop drop curves, and and one thing that also vary as well is, is the curve can be, be smooth or it can be sharp. I like the sharp curve ones. So if you're not actually 100% sure what sort of handlebars you like, it's gonna cost you a lot of money if you want to actually start trying different handlebars. So this is something you need to consider when you buy. You wanna make sure you get a bike fit and you've tried a few handlebars on the bike you've got now. So you're very confident that when you buy this bike, those handlebars are gonna suit you. That's where I'm gonna leave it. I hope that little bit of information helps you decide on any new bike you're going to buy. 
and I will see you next vid. Cheers.